The movie opens in a dressing room where a young girl Jessie is getting ready for her wedding. In another dressing room the groom Ed is nervous about his big day and suspects whether he is making a mistake by marrying Jessie. A few moments later, while Ed is trying to escape his wedding, his father-in-law Frank calls him from behind. Frank figures that Ed might be intending to leave his daughter so he keeps him from going outside and insists on having a drink with him. Ed tries to refuse but Frank doesn't let him go. After ordering drinks for both of them, Frank starts narrating how his marriage was full of ups and downs. The scene changes and we are taken decades back to New Year's Eve, when young Frank is seen standing in the bar of a hotel and writing his New Year's resolutions. When his friend Buddy joins him and asks him about their mutual friend Susan, Frank tells him that she is usually late. Also, Frank asks him if he has seen her lately. But he tells him that he has not seen her since Teddy's party. Frank is curious to know if she brought a date to that party so Buddy tells him that he doesn't know anything about it. Shortly, Susan arrives at the hotel and joins them. In a short while, Frank's entire group is seen cheering and talking about their New Year's resolutions. Everyone shares their resolutions and when Susan is asked, she tells everyone that she wants to buy a red Harley. In addition to that, Susan shares another one of her resolutions that she will find herself a husband and that she will pick her husband from one of her friends. She asks if anyone wants to marry her. To her surprise, all of her male friends raise their hands. Susan finds it difficult to choose among them, so she asks all of them to reveal the nicknames they have given to their dicks. One of her friends reveals that they call their dick a squeaky, bald-headed mouse. But he says that he calls his master of universe, defender of the galaxy. And when she asks Frank the same question, Frank surprises her by saying that he refers to his penis by the name Truth. That's when the crowd in the hotel starts the countdown, and at exactly midnight, Susan tells Frank that it was always gonna be him who she wanted to marry and kisses him. And soon, they get married. The scene changes changes to a few years later, by the time their daughter Jessie is seven years old. One morning, Frank gets ready to leave for his job where he is supposed to deliver a speech. Frank is a very well-organized person who makes a list of everything he needs to do in a day. Before leaving, Susan asks him to return the rented movies to the store. Frank refuses her by saying that he doesn't have time as he has to leave or he will miss the ferry. She tells him that he won't be late because she has forwarded the clock to give him 10 extra minutes. But when Frank looks at the clock, he realizes that Susan has actually reversed it, and now he has 10 minutes less. Instantly, he leaves the house in a hurry to catch the ferry. When he reaches the ferry dock, it's 8 a.m. but the arrogant ferry operator doesn't let him pass and tells him to wait for the next ferry. While waiting for the next ferry, Frank gets late for his 10 a.m. lecture. An hour later, when he reaches the hall, he delivers his speech on the topic the five-minute efficiency. In his speech, he talks about how people should start their day by making a list of goals for that day based on priorities. Also, he reminds the audience that they must control their whim to conquer the chaos in the world. Towards the end of his speech, Buddy also arrives in the hall to watch him deliver his speech. After his speech, they go to their hotel and decide to hang out in the bar of the hotel. Buddy appreciates him for his speech but Frank seems to be distracted. Buddy asks him what's wrong. As a result, Frank tells him how he was late due to Susan's mistake because she set the clock backward and he ended up missing the ferry. Frank is embarrassed because he showed up late to a lecture on the efficient use of time. In response, Buddy tries to cheer him up by saying that Susan was just trying to relax him from his tough schedule. Buddy also asks him to take chances in his life and try new things but Frank being a man of habit doesn't like his idea. So Buddy leaves him there and goes to talk to some ladies. When Frank is left alone, a woman who attended his lecture earlier approaches him and introduces herself as Paula. She tells Frank that she has read his book, Five Minute Efficiency Trainer which she found very useful, and now she makes lists. Ultimately, she starts flirting with him and buys him a strong drink. When both of them are drunk enough, she asks him to use his hotel room's bathroom because she has this phobia about public restrooms. Frank takes her to his room so she can urinate. When Paula comes out of the bathroom, Frank is shocked to see her half naked. He tells her that he is married and has a daughter to avoid any intimacy with her. But she doesn't care, throws him on the bed, and starts kissing him. Frank struggles to free himself from her grip when suddenly he gets a call from Susan. After pushing Paula aside, he picks up the phone to talk to Susan. Susan apologizes for her mistake and asks him about his speech. While they are talking, a glass falls from Paula's hand and she laughs. Susan hears that and asks Frank what the sound is. Frank gets confused, not knowing what to tell Susan. So he hangs up the call by saying that he is exhausted and will see her the next day. Once again, Paula throws herself on him, trying to get intimate with him but Frank grabs his bag so that he can leave. Before leaving, he apologizes to her and tells her that he loves his wife. A few moments after he has left, Susan calls again. Paula picks up and tells her that Frank just left from here. On the other hand, Frank decides to drive around the peninsula since he has already missed the last ferry of the day. On his way back home while he is driving, suddenly a car comes from the opposite side and crashes into a tree. Immediately, Frank pulls over, 
When he goes near the car, he sees a woman screaming from labor pain. Instantly, he puts her in his car and decides to take her to the hospital. When he asks her name, she introduces herself as Nancy. She also tells him that she doesn't want this baby and that he should take the baby once delivered. Finally, they reach the hospital. When the doctors take her inside, they ask him to fill out the form assuming him to be Nancy's husband. He tells them that he is not her husband, fills out the necessary information on the form and leaves. The next morning, the hospital nurse calls Frank's home and asks Susan if she can talk to Mr. Frank. When Susan tells her that he is not home, the nurse informs her that Mr. Frank must know that Mrs. Frank is no longer in the hospital. Susan gets confused and tells the nurse that she is Frank's wife. After listening to that, the nurse tells her angrily that she must not have left the hospital right after childbirth. Now, Susan is even more confused. The nurse thinks that she might have called the wrong person and repeats Frank's address that he wrote on the hospital form. Out of anger, Susan hangs up the phone. Just then, Frank arrives at home. When Susan sees him, she yells at him and orders him to get out. Frank doesn't understand her behavior so she tells him that she knows everything. Frank believes that she might be referring to the incident with Paula so he assures her that it was a professional flirtation and that it was just one kiss. Both of them start yelling. Susan accuses him of having an extramarital affair and asks him about the baby at the hospital. When he tries to explain, she pushes him out and slams the door. Consequently, Frank rushes to the hospital to find out anything about Nancy but she has already left the hospital, leaving her baby there. He requests the nurse to call Susan to clarify to her that he only brought Nancy to the hospital, and that's it. But the nurse refuses to help him by telling him that she is not sure if he is telling the truth. When he finds no help from the hospital staff, he goes straight to his friend Damon, who is a lawyer. He asks him about the legal issues regarding this matter and asks him how he can prove his innocence to Susan. Damon suggests that he should get a court order for a DNA sample from the baby, which could take up to four months. Damon also assures him that if he is innocent, then no court can prove that he is the father of Nancy's baby. Since Susan has kicked him out of the house, Frank has to stay in a hotel. As days pass by, he calls Susan every day to prove his innocence, but she hangs up on him every time. He begs for forgiveness but has no luck. Eventually, Frank goes to a laboratory for DNA testing. The doctor tells him that the results will be ready in four to five days. After giving his sample to the laboratory, he goes to Jesse's school to pick her up and spend some time with her. When Jesse asks him about his return, he tells her that he will be back in a few days. Finally, the day comes when his DNA test results are expected. Frank goes to the laboratory and anxiously asks the doctor about his results. Firstly, the doctor assures him that it is 100% sure that he is not the father of Nancy's child. In addition to that, he breaks the news to Frank that he has been sterile since his birth, which means he can have children. Frank doesn't believe him and tells him that he has a little girl at home so it is impossible. However, there's a possibility that Frank's test result got swapped with another's. The doctor apologizes to Frank for dropping this news on him and assures him that there has been no mistake whatsoever. Frank leaves the clinic devastated. After spending some time alone thinking about his infertility, he goes straight to his house to talk to Susan about it. He enters the house angrily and asks her if his entire marriage was a lie. He tells her that he knows everything and leaves immediately. The scene changes to a bar where Frank is seen making lists about whether he should kill the doctor, Susan, or himself. Out of nowhere, a man approaches him and asks him to give his seat to him. When Frank turns towards him, he recognizes him immediately. He is the guy who works the ferry. He remembers that if this guy had not stopped him that day from getting on the ferry, he wouldn't be late and wouldn't have known the things he knows now. In his mind, Frank blames the ferry operator for everything that has happened in his life after that day. He starts arguing with him and asks him what time it is. The ferry operator also gets angry, and they both decide to fight outside the bar. When they go outside, Frank lets out his anger and beats the shit out of him. After the fight, Frank feels very good and resolves to fight more in the future. Back at Frank's house, Nancy pays a visit with her baby in her arms. When Susan opens the door, Nancy asks for Frank. Susan gets mad at her and tells her that she is Frank's wife. She also asks Nancy if Frank is the father of her baby. That's when Nancy explains everything to her about how Frank helped her. After listening to Nancy's side of the story, she calls Frank and leaves a message for him, telling him that they need to talk. The next day, Susan is told by one of her friends that Frank was seen fighting with a guy outside a bar. Also, there is a rumor that Frank has bought himself a red Harley. Susan gets upset because she never thought Frank would do such a thing without her. At that moment, she decides to check in on him at the hotel he has been staying at. When she reaches the hotel, she finds a woman in his room, but Frank is nowhere to be found. Though Susan sees a note on the table saying, kill myself, that's when she realizes that Frank is having suicidal thoughts. On the other hand, Frank is seen riding his Harley without a helmet in a reckless manner. When when Susan returns from Frank's hotel room, she goes straight to Buddy to show him the note she found in Frank's hotel room. Buddy tries to flirt with her but she gets offended. She tells him that she only had three men in her whole life and now she only needs Frank. She asks Buddy to find Frank and make sure he doesn't do anything dumb. Later that day, Buddy goes to talk to Frank. 
and tells him that Susan is ready to take him back into her life. In response, Frank informs him that he is not going back. He also tells Buddy that a lifetime of calculated decisions has gotten him nothing, so now he takes chances all the time. He makes a list of things he wants to do on cards, picks out one card randomly, and this makes him feel free. Buddy suspects that Frank's peculiar behavior might be a result of depression, so he advises him to see a doctor. Thus, Frank tells Buddy that he saw a doctor who revealed to him that he is incapable of having kids which indicates that Jesse is not his genetic daughter. This sudden information leaves Buddy astounded, and he begins to think. He remembers that he once slept with Susan and that Jesse might be his daughter. Immediately, he sets out to talk to Susan about it. When he reaches Susan's workplace, he asks Susan who was the third man in her life, with whom she had a sexual relationship. Susan tells her about a guy who she had sex with when she was 17. She asks Buddy why he is asking her such questions. Thus, he tells her what Frank had told him. On the other hand, Frank has to deliver another speech about the efficient use of time. But instead of telling the audience to make good use of their time, he urges them to take chances based on whim. Consequently, he ends up giving a crappy speech. Meanwhile, Buddy and Susan are trying to figure out the situation. Susan reminds him of Teddy's party a week before New Year's Eve when they had sexual intercourse. According to her, that's what got her pregnant. Buddy tells her that she should have married him instead of Frank because he always loved her. In the heat of the moment, he tries to kiss her but she refuses and leaves the room. Back to Frank who is partying in bars like never before. He sees Paula on the dance floor. He goes up to her and asks her if she is still interested. Paula remembers him as a time freak. First, she slaps him and then starts kissing him. The next morning, he wakes up to find Paula in his room. He asks her what happened last night. She tells him that he passed out during sex and then cried in his sleep for two and a half hours. She informs him that her experience was unsatisfying and leaves. After she left, Frank stands on the terrace and is very depressed about his life. On the other hand, Susan leaves another message for Frank, requesting him to talk to her. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. Susan opens the door, and the delivery guy gives her a bouquet. She reads the note on it, and angrily puts the bouquet on the console. When she goes to her workplace, Buddy comes there to talk to her. When she sees him, she angrily asks him to stop sending her flowers and leave her alone. Whereas, Buddy wants to make things right by being there as a father for Jesse. But Susan warns him that Jesse wants nothing to do with him. Later that night after Susan has put Jesse to bed, Frank comes to talk to her. Susan is overwhelmed to see him and apologizes to him for everything. She assures him that this must have happened before New Year's Eve, because after that she had been loyal to Frank ever since. Frank asks her if she knows who Jesse's father is. Susan starts crying and tells him that she is Jesse's father. Maybe not medically but in all other ways, she's his daughter only. She reminds him of the times when he was there for Jesse in every sickness, and how he loved her unconditionally. Susan begs him to come back to his family. All of a sudden, Jesse calls her mom from upstairs, not knowing about Frank's visit. Susan asks him to wait for her and goes upstairs. Franks goes near the console to grab himself a drink and sees the bouquet sent by Buddy. After reading the note, he realizes that Buddy is the biological father of Jesse. Out of anger, he storms out instantly. When Susan comes down and looks around for Frank, she sees his wedding ring placed on Buddy's note. Frank reaches his hotel room full of rage and breaks the room's lamp and chairs. At that moment, he decides to kill Buddy and goes to an arms store to buy a rifle for this purpose. After buying the gun, he goes to Damon and asks him for the key to his boathouse. Damon calls Buddy to tell him about the boathouse and that Frank has asked him to tell Buddy to meet him there. Damon offers to come along with him, but Buddy tells him that he can handle it on his own. Before leaving to meet Frank, Buddy leaves a message for Susan and tells him that he thinks Frank is in some sort of trouble, so he is going up the lake to check in on him. When Buddy reaches the boathouse, Frank is glad to see him and asks him if he wants to tell him anything. Buddy tells him that he has nothing to share, so Frank asks him to go for a boat ride. On the other hand, after getting Buddy's message, Susan sets out with Jesse to the boathouse. In the meantime, Frank takes Buddy on the boat to the middle of the lake. Buddy asks him if he is done using cards to make decisions L. In response, Frank tells him that it was the cards that decided for him to come here tonight and accomplish something. On the other hand, Susan and Jesse arrived at the boathouse and are looking for them. When the boat is far enough from the land, Frank pulls out his rifle. Buddy thinks that maybe Frank is going to kill himself, so he tries to stop him and asks him to shoot him first. In an attempt to snatch the rifle from each other, Frank mistakenly fires the rifle and puts a hole in the boat. When Susan hears the gunshot, she calls the police. Back at the lake, water starts filling up the boat. Buddy sees his chance and after snatching the rifle, he throws it in the lake. Then, he asks Frank to commit suicide now. Frank gets angrier than ever and tells him that he is trying to kill Buddy and not commit suicide. 
Frank jumps onto him and both of them fall into the water. When they both swim back to the shore, Buddy apologizes to him for everything and tells him that he understands the reason behind his motives. Meanwhile, the police have also arrived back at the boathouse. Both Buddy and Frank walk a mile back to the boathouse. On their way, Frank asks him if he loves Susan and Jesse. Buddy tells him that it doesn't matter what he feels for Susan. As far as Jesse is concerned she is just a kid, and he hardly knows her. Buddy asks him what he is going to do now. Frank tells him to tell the police that he lost him in the lake because he doesn't want to go back. Buddy punches him and yells at him that he wishes that Susan had picked her instead of Frank. Buddy reminds him that both Susan and Jesse love Frank with all their might. After that Buddy leaves him to go to the cabin. Back in the boathouse, Jesse is waiting for Frank, standing in front of the window. When Frank reaches there, she sees him and rushes outside to hug him. The scene changes back to Jesse's wedding day, where Frank is done narrating his life story to Ed. To conclude things, he tells him that beneath all the chaos in a human's life, there is a pattern and a truth called love. Furthermore, he explains to Ed that the most important thing about love is that we have to choose to give it, and we choose to receive it. He also tells Ed that if he succeeds in figuring out this theory, then he must not worry about people like Jake. That's when Susan comes and asks Ed if Frank is bothering him. Frank asks Ed to get ready as the ceremony is about to begin. When Ed leaves, Susan picks out the cards Frank had written for Ed and notices that none of the cards have walk written on it. Both of them start laughing and step outside to walk Jesse down the aisle. So Jesse gets married with the blessing of her parents, including Buddy by her side. And that's it for the recap. What are your thoughts on the movie? Do you think Frank did the right thing by forgiving Susan for the sake of their family? Please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting movie recaps in the future.